If you like this programming, support us on Patreon. Exclusive content, discounts, and more. Patreon.com slash The Suckward. Alright, hello everybody and welcome to another rousing episode of Suck Talk featuring myself, the Super Suck Lord, here in the sweaty ass suck hole with David Healy and fucking Dove Kellimer of DKD already? Toys. Yeah, we started already. It's like Mark Maron. Why? What's the problem? Nothing, I'm fine. It's like a lead in, you know? Yeah, it's go like. On. All right, and uh, we're just coming off the fucking sweet ecstasy that was New York City Comic Con 2017, and we're going to review some of the bootleg toys that Mr. Kellimer has brought for us and has offered to the public, and these are the ones that apparently didn't sell out, so they must be way ahead of their time, otherwise people would have bought them because people are fucking stupid. Actually, not true. I bought one of everything that we had. Oh, so this is your personal collection we're going to look at here, no. too. That's okay, so that's a lot of fucking toys sitting over there, so why don't we just... Uh, Get into it, skip the preamble. If you're watching this, you already get this whole fucking world and we don't have to explain it to you, right, David? Okay. I'm excited. Let's do it. Oh, okay. Let's just launch right into it. All right. <clears throat> so you have to excuse me. I lost my voice before the first day of New York Comic Con. So but yet you keep talking. I know. It's amazing. All right. So this is from Rika, UK artist here. And this is called Recycle the Giant. Got to look at this? I got to look at it, yeah. Okay. So let's just describe it. It uh, looks like a Andre the Giant figure. It's like the late 80s Hasbro wrestling figures. Okay, and it's Andre the Giant, and it says Recycle the Giant. And he is uh, hand silk screen the card. He's laser die cut it and signed and numbered on the back. He also makes his own blister. Is this a piece of wood? Uh, no, but it's a really thick chipboard, I think. It feels like some sort of substrate. Yeah. It's an English chipboard. Um, okay, well, what's up with this? I like the blue. I think the, uh, the denim looks like it really is somewhat acid washed. It's like hand painted jeans. I think what he said. Brush, a lot of brush strokes on there, which looks cool. Is that Andre never had a chance to wear his own shirt? That's what this is about. It's recycling the meme. I think it's a tribute to Shepard Fairey. Okay. It'd be cool if it was like Andre on the shirt, wearing a shirt with Andre on the shirt. It's Andre on the shirt wearing Andre on the shirt. I think that's something that you can try to pull off. It's it's been done now, so. This is pretty cool. It's cool. The, the execution is amazing, incredible. The, the the thickness of the board, it feels like wood. It's got, it's silk screen. It's got a good half tone pattern here. Custom vacuum formed blister, right? And I do, I do believe he sculpted it too, or he he re sculpted on the vintage Hasbro figure. Even the face? I, it's a little bit. And he's holding a deck of cards that have the image on the shirt, uh, and it oh, says not a toy. Um. So those are supposed to be stickers. Yeah. Oh, stickers, right. Yeah. Okay. What did this retail for? Sixty-five. Okay. Uh, I don't really fully get the Shepard Fairey connection. You'd think he would have used the actual Andre the Giant as a posse sticker to. And is that the gold, home. red, and that would have been if I was gonna. I, I can't. I can't find anything to complain about here. I don't know if it would be cool. I mean, he's a big Shepard Fairey fan. It's a tribute to Shepard Fairey. I don't think he wanted to use his art without his permission. Okay. <laughs> I mean, the thing is... Uh, That's funny to you. It's kind of interesting just for... I mean, wrestling figure fans are pretty crazy <laughs> about wrestling figures, so I think that was, <coughs> that's something that could appeal to someone just like rest, wrestling I, figures. There was, we almost sold out of these. I think there's only three or four left, and definitely a lot of people came up to the booth to like, I have every you know, Hasbro wrestling figure. Exactly, yeah. And then it's like a cool variant. They saw this and Yeah, this, is, yeah. this is pretty tight. Pretty, it's the execution is really execution good. Is it's legit. legit. Yeah, it's pretty legit. Um, I'm trying to find something to criticize about it. Is he 33 himself, Rika? Why, because it says age is 33 and up? Yeah. Uh, conceptually, yeah, sure. I mean, I guess it's sort of a commentary, and I want to talk about this later on just like the whole sort of rehash culture that goes along with this whole thing that we do. Yes, no? Yeah, yeah. It's fucking hot in here. Sorry. It's just sacrificing for creativity. Yeah, I know. It's pretty cool. It doesn't exactly, like, r rile me up, but it's all right. Maybe it's not meant for you. No, it's good. It could be a good introductory but it does, piece. It, yeah, if I don't love it or hate it, then it sucks. Look, you know, uh, I think Robert Williams said, he said, there's no such thing as bad art. There's a great art, there's good art, and things that just don't interest you. I heard another one that was like, there was, like, good art, bad <laughs> art, there's non-art, and failed art. Okay. Um, this is Stay Fresh. 
by the same artist. Yeah, right. Okay. Wow, fucking heavy as shit. He had to ship those here from the UK. They were like two pounds of resin each. And this is a follow-up to... He did one for San Diego called Wump Poppy. Yeah, I hated that thing. Which was the <laughs> the Wumpo with all this, like, blinged out. So this is Stay Fresh. There's no... Okay, there's no, like, description of it. So it's just, like, Stay Fresh. Well... Like it, a rapper. Yeah, but Stay Fresh... Uh, the Stay Buff Marshmallow Man got shot in the movie, so... So he's wearing a fucking bulletproof vest. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this is a Ghostbusters. There's like a, a reference to the Ghostbusters use of the character as opposed to the marshmallow use of the character. Probably. Okay. This is what. Okay. First of all, I'm not the artist. It's no, know, again, yeah. again, it's excellently executed. Same, same approach as the Andre the Giant one. Uh, he's got the like the sort of the the the, the gangbanger <laughs> bandana, and then the gold chain. So he's kind of mixing up his hip hop genres. You know, he's got gangster rap and, and sort of classic b-boy shit. You know, like, stay fresh. Fre Nobody even says fresh in hip-hop anymore. That's like, that's like first-generation rap terminology. So in a way, you know, it doesn't work in that regard. And it looks like he's stoned, too, because he's got... Uh, is it, is this, could this be different in the UK? I don't think so. Maybe. Who I, the fuck knows? Actually, with the Andre, when he first pitched it to me, he said he wanted to call him a hipster Andre. That's and, funny. And I said to him that, you know, like, calling someone a hipster in the U.S. is kind of a derogatory term. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, I don't want to do that. And like, a hipster in the U.K. is a little different. Someone who's cool. Like, well, that's what it's supposed to mean here. That's what it means. I mean, the term hipster is really yeah, old. It yeah, goes back to, like, the beatnik era, right? Yeah. Right. Who wants to be around right now at the age we're at and not be, you want to be in the 60s and not be a hippie? You know, like, I have no problem if someone says you're a hipster. It's like, who cares? You know? I understand, but it's a derogatory term. Okay. Generally, so if I would call, put a beard on the Andre. If you called Andre a hipster, like it means you kind of have a problem with him, and he told. Or me, you have a problem with the people appropriating him or riding maybe, him. Maybe, but he said that that was not his intent, and I said maybe stay away from a hipster. And then he said, "How about recycle the giant?" I'm like, "That's well, brilliant. I mean, that's good because it doesn't really." It, I, I like stuff that isn't totally on the nose. Like it gives you something to interpret. Like, I made a, like a really, like a big smile on him, and he painted him green. I mean, I guess what I what the, what I don't like I don't I don't like just like making something hip hop for no reason, you know. Like let's take a character and make him hip hop because he's got a, a common word in his name that might be hip hop. Like there's no what's the reason for it's why why, from, why like, what's, from the, overseas what's the I don't feel too. like what I don't get what the common I get the commentary on an Andre. I don't really get what this is arguing. I Other think than it's have just to have him on the show. I will, but I'm just saying that's I'm just responding. To, I, I as a person there was a no be a B, like a notorious Big thing because like, but there isn't that. But I felt like that would work if it was tied to that. But if someone just wants like a Stay Puft Marshmallow Man with a bulletproof vest on, it's a gangster. That's the thing. Now, so that could be that. It doesn't have to. It's nice that it's not a pun. I guess, but it's yeah. a pun in a way. I just don't like. I don't like the one poppy. That's like the the, the like a poppy chulo, you know, poppy culo, you know. And he's like a hip hop. So really, you have nothing valid to say. No, it's not valid. I just don't understand. I don't. I don't like. I don't like pieces where it's just like let's take a word and just build on that word and make it into some kind of gag. And everyone and who's watching and it has already no, yeah. But and Dove so thought you'd be worried. You're gonna about tell me to, to shut up on my own show. <laughs> I'm just saying, I just think conceptually there's nothing going on there. There's nothing hip-hop about the Wampa. Why make, him, why make him hip-hop? Stranger Wars. Why make the Wampa hip-hop? Answer that question. Why should the Wampa be hip-hop? I am not the artist. I cannot. Okay, so then... I'm not responsible for it. Yeah, but I'm just asking you to speculate. Why do you like it? Whatever. He's just trying to get stuff sold. Is like, that a reason? He likes it. Okay, fine, whatever. You guys, you guys can make this as, as I, uninteresting as you want. Look, I, I don't know the answer to that. I'm asking you to I speculate. Don't see, I don't see anything wrong with it. So you're asking why? And why did you why make? Not? Why did you make a pink stormtrooper? It's like what about the anal? Thing? There's, I could go on and on about why I did. <laughs> what about the anal? I'm sure he can go on and on about it, dude. But he's not here. I bet he couldn't. He's but, fuming right all now. All right, I'll talk to him about it, dude. Rika, next time you're in New York. You need to be on the couch. Yeah, yeah, I'm just let, I mean, let us, he was actually though. here. Listen, I like the fellow, and I think his art is great. But you know, this is a critique show, so oh, I'm just yeah, trying yeah. to like ask Bring the it. questions well, that I would ask of any piece. And the other thing is, a lot of this work is out of context because you're not looking at the whole breadth and depth of like his whole entire career. 
So, I've seen the work. Okay. We've seen the breath. All right, let's keep it moving. Stranger Wars. Some special ed toys. Okay. I didn't watch Stranger Things, so I'm not 100%. And I know I, I'm stupid for not watching no, it. No, it's look at it. The, show, the story sucks. Okay. Um, but, but it looks you'll, really cool. You'll enjoy watching it. You like the sound of and, it, but I, I I understand that there's a character on here that called Eleven, right? And she's into Eggo waffles or something like that. Right. Okay, so this is that character mashed up with Princess Leia. This seems like if you put in a computer and we're like, I absolutely Siri, give hate me something this piece. that will be popular in this in the I fall of 2017. This is garbage. Like it would say, what is the, Wars, Why do this? A combination of Princess Leia and Stranger Things. This should be popular. Like Jack FM. There's nothing it going on there. Like it's, 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 it's execution's great. Was it made by a robot? <laughs> it's uh, like an algorithm. A pop robot? Oh no. Yeah, I'm bring um, it. <laughs> it. The face looks a little dirty on it too. It's like the, the, not on the figure, but, <coughs> but on that thing. Yeah. Was she supposed to be soot covered? Or that's the part I didn't understand. Is that it's just, I know she has a bloody nose when she uses her thing. But see, like that, like. I think that's her shading, but I can't okay. say for sure. It's like a vitiligo thing, or is that a oh, bar- vitiligo kind of variant? Shading on the whole piece. I don't okay. like this. It just looked that was going to in the back. You, what do you think of this? Oh, Are you not inclined to glued? really give opinions? It's glued. I, mean, I have opinions, but I I happen to like it. Why? I mean, I like, like the Star show. Wars. I, I think it's funny. Like, what's you, funny about you it? You take it like these things like very seriously. Should I not? This is a Mad Magazine. Well, because this is like, no, it's not. This because is like, there's no this joke. Is like What's the joke? sixteenth of a Mad Magazine page. Because the page. two of you also feel very threatened by these. I no, do not don't. feel threatened. It's not like the, the point of this whole exercise, why we're sitting here, <laughs> is to critique work. So critique. I so am. But I'm just asking you what the... I don't understand. I, only re- this just seems incredibly It just seems like lazy. it's easy. It's like the Trump... Thing like the Trump Vader. The Trump won a fucking designer toy award. Exactly, the but Trump it was also which first of all means nothing. It was Trump also was a T-shirt legendary. and a meme like for a uh, half a year before uh, then. So okay, it's, but it's at fine. least the Trump thing makes sense. I think it's very on the nose. It's very obvious and simple, simple and, and heavy-handed. That already exists. But I get it. What it's arguing. This I don't get. What point this is trying to make? Other than here's two things that are popular. Let's put them together. You're done. And it doesn't. That's your but there's no but, synergy. But that's okay. No, it's not okay. For some people, it's it is. lazy. It's fucking creatively lazy. Well, yeah. But Aren't you fortunate that all of these other artists are lazy and you are not? No, I'm not. <laughs> And that your this work shines so far above no, them. I'm guilty of making uninspiring all stuff, right, but too. I will we could, I, if you <laughs> want to sit here, I'll review all my own work and okay, tell you what you sucks know, about it. You know the best thing about all of these other people who have followed in your footsteps? Yeah. And have just taken one plus one equals two? Mm-hmm. Is that it has forced you to not do that. Yeah, that's true. Because if these people didn't exist, you would do more of this. I don't no. know if I would do Morgan this. Never, Morgan done, I never, never in his I, own world. You have done some of it. Yeah, I have. Okay. But. But it is pushing you farther. It is pushing you to think about your work to make sure that you are taking it to the next level. Have you ever combined two popular things yeah. and you said it's really popular now? No, but I things? mean, like, I com- probably the most obvious thing I did was the Dark Father, where I took the Darth Vader and mixed it with... Um, Don Corleone but there's a point to that because it's about fathers and it's about you know and it's about role models and it's about looking up to and admir- ad- admiring uh, inadmirable people and this things is really that. surface and level you could go of. if I could take I, I, I may be wrong and my reasoning might, what might be superficial but usually I have some kernel of a concept behind why I put two things together why do they say this quality is sold separately this looks like it was like professionally quality, yeah. sculpted and because he's of... ripping off the psychedelic oh approach, well, that makes sense where everybody has to sort of diss their own work within the work not everyone like holds themselves in such high regard as myself I don't hold myself in high regard at all I'm just saying it's so did just... they change the face okay yeah so it's, it's changed in the back too <laughs> let's read the back there's not much to it really this is a ri- this is a riff on the Marvel comic supersize illustration, <coughs> and uh, filmed by Gore Lucas. You gotta understand, we're in the pop world. This is a Funko pop of that would never exist. Look, there's a place yeah. for all of this, and when yeah, I ta- yeah, yeah. when I take this stuff to a convention, there are some people who look at this as art and are looking for something to take them to a higher level, and they're looking to read into something and identify with the artist or the art or the statement. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. There are, that's what you're looking for. That is your path. 
there are some people who go to a show who say, I love fucking Stranger Things and I love Star Wars and this is amazing. Yeah. And they fucking line up for it and they love it. Okay. It just that it doesn't, like, if there's someone that says they love Star Wars and they love Stranger Things, like, they got there by themselves. Like, what Morgan does and what I think I hope I do is connect things that are a little bit more hard to connect and make things. Whereas this is kind as of like well, for the masses. As well you should. Yeah, yeah. This is more like a... There's basic different yeah. things for different strokes for different oh, folks oh indeed how right. many people worked on that because there's a couple names on the back um is this by special ed I believe uh mock toys did the the card art okay and I forgot what is mock is that mint on card I think it's a pun I think, I think it's, it's mo- like mocking mock, mocking and Once mint on card it used to be mock joes okay um I believe that George Gaspar sculpted the figure so there's three people wow a lot of a lot of people a lot went of people into that. Not to have good quality on it, right? Oh, guys! <laughs> <laughs> Set them up, I like buddy. those guys, and they've done <laughs> yeah, yeah. cool shit. Look, that piece I don't think really connects. That should be a Funko Pop. It would be the most fun, the most popular Funko Pop it's ever. Be, it would be the most pop Funko. The most, yeah, the most exactly. Fun, yeah, Funk Popable Popco. All right, what else you got? Whatever. I'm over that. Uh, buzzer guts, Boba Stein. Okay. This was, I think, a. Uh, now is he calling out the thriller killer, or is he friendly with him? Let's review what this is I first for the audience. Okay. okay. This is a combination of a vintage Boba Fett and a Remco Frankenstein. That color is really gross and nice. Yeah. Uh, is this glow in the dark on the package? It's actually silk screened and it's glow in the dark. Yeah. But the and then there's, the a, there's, there's, there's like a collage with the Suck Lord's I, headshot. That's your head. Yeah. I think I they're all different. Yeah, you saw that at the show. You were none too funny. pleased. No, I think it's. He just goes, "Whoa, it's me." <laughs> I like the back better than the front. So, uh-huh. Killer Bootlegs did a... Uh, Frankenfett. Frankenfett. So, mm-hmm. I think this was Buzzard Guts' version. Oh, we're Steen. But Is why? it Steen or Stein? Uh, why? Because why not? Wait, you... Can, can we at least try? try? I can we at least try? try? Like, hey, can we, I, Listen, I'm gonna, we're not going to do this show if the answer to everything is, it's cool and some people like it. Like, we got need some analysis You are entitled here. to your opinion. We're here but to you're hear you're not giving an opinion. I want your opinion. He's, Why the he fuck are you sitting really here? He's his opinion. He's like the guy so what is offering All right, so what do you think? I don't... It's The, the opinion I, is for you two yeah. assholes to say what okay. you think. Like, okay. I didn't buy one. I don't want to <laughs> buy one, but I don't really care. <laughs> you know? And I, my thing was like, oh, is this a call out? Like, I'm, I can do this. That's the most interesting thing about it is that it's supposed maybe. to be like a. Is this supposed to be a riff on the well, Frankenfed? Which Absolutely. I don't particularly care for the Frankenfed either, for no, the reasons no. that I've stated a zillion times. Is that there's, is it the alliteration? I don't. I know you don't like alliteration. No, I love alliteration. Oh, you do? I love alliteration with numbers. Suck lords. Why do you think all the suck lord numbers start with S? I just got because I now. love fucking alliterative numbers. I don't. I'm not again. It just. Does it say stuff on the back? There's or no? nothing. There's no reason to do it. What? Well, do, what's the reason? People are having fun and they want to share their fun with other if people. You ask rhetorical questions. I'm just gonna let them go. Someone's you like, hey, I might no be able to speculate at all. How much was this? Uh, fifty-five. Okay. If people just make it and they're like, hey, I'm I don't just, have to work an hour. I can make one of these. Mm. It's kind of you know. <laughs> It looks cool. <coughs> it's weird on the back. The back is cool. I love it. the back is great. It's just very it's just really off. Yeah. It looks like a fucking ransom note. Yeah, it's really kooky. A That's bit. what I yeah, like yeah. about it. I mean, this guy, this guy's style. He's cleaned up his style a lot. I, his earlier shit was really his Mario shit. Strength. Remember the three of us? We saw it at the same yeah, time. I was like, who the fuck out? is this guy? Dump bought like the whole. But now, he, now, he, now he's going. Now he's trying to get mainstream. Uh, I thought that's mainstream. No, it's Boba Fett, but the green is nice on the Boba it Fett. It looks cool. It looks cool. Whatever. You don't... I mean, you're not... I don't know. I mean, I just feel like everybody's always complaining about, why don't people... Why doesn't the art world take this seriously? You know? And it's just not like, really, there's a yeah. good reason. There's a reason, because... It's not aspiring. It's not. It doesn't. It's not reaching. It's no, just like it's something that people have been doing for in a the long same time. Universe. I mean, this is all. This is. This is what the problem that I'm finding in my own work. And we'll talk about this later. But you know, it's just like I'm. I'm hitting a wall with the the sort of sample culture, in general. Yeah. You know, I feel like there's only so much to be done with it. You know, walking around Comic Con, it's just like everybody is like. Every artist out there is like doing some kind of street art version of a stormtrooper or the Joker or Transformers or He-Man, and it's like that's all great, but it's just like again and again and again we're just like sort of wallowing in this that's rehash. Our culture, shit. Though. But you, radio. you made a career. Out I of did, it. but now I'm kind of He's getting to the on. point of being done with it. He's it's doing like I feel like and, and, that, and that is your right. 
But there are still other people that want to make the money that, that you made. I'm that's, not that's, saying that they should. That they got. I'm not saying that they shouldn't do it, but I'm just saying I personally am getting bored of it. Yeah, totally. Me too. So let's but, look at whatever. whatever. Let's look at the next thing, dude. This is the Great Showdowns by Scott C. And these went really well, right? The first one that he did and stuff. Uh, the the Ghostbuster based one, yes. yeah. So Scott C has been doing art shows Who's based on this. Scott C. He's an artist. Uh, an illustrator. Um, he has had several books called The Great Showdown. Now, does he have someone sculpt these based on his drawings? Yeah, George Gaspar. Okay, George, George. Oh, blowing up the scene. This is what is that is a literary? This, illiterate and thing? then on the back, wait, are these all movie references? Yes. And these are this, up and what, coming. Is this from Die Hard? What is this? That's Die Hard. Yeah. I, I don't. Is know. it Broken Glass? Ah, oh, that's funny. I didn't look at it the whole time. So it's Bruce Willis versus Broken Glass. Shoot yeah. the glass. Okay, this is excellent. I think this is great. Because yeah, it's based on an original... Well, I like I that... Mean, he's got books of these things. He's got three volumes of these The things. interaction of the glass and him is is the thing that no one else has done. It's, cle- like it's, it's clever. It's made the Broken Glass and Die Hard a character. But see, this is... This That's is, the thing. This piece is different than everything else. Yeah. Because yeah. this is a 2D artist. Mm-hmm. Who has just taken his stuff and interpreted it into 3D? But I like the way the figure looks exactly like the drawing. <laughs> I love it. And it has a very flash. distinctive that's signature George style. George with Scott's guidance. You know? Yeah. Yeah, but it's that's good. You know, that's that's and, taking it to the, another level. Well done, Scott. The, the Ghostbusters one at Comic Con also sold out. Uh, it was a Ghostbuster versus Slimer, and this is it was awesome. Did he better, make I the Sour Man versus Gandalf? People have been asking about that. So well, those are the illustrations already exist. And then the well. Office oh, Space yeah. one. So he's like in the Mark Todd kind this of is thing, cool. like the badass book. This is yeah, fun. Like this that. is fun. There are hundreds of these, and it's really like, tight. I want I want him to do like the really weird ones. There's like the Point Break with the wave. See, that's see. I like that shit. I where think it would be focus in on Johnny some Utah obscure little War child. I think would be that would be the show. So I, the problem child. I have with these, yeah. and, you know, encouraging him in which direction to go, is that this retails for a hundred bucks, mm-hmm. and usually we get away with the slimer being small or the glass being small, and if it ends up being, let's say, like the Lord of the Rings, because several it's people have, have come figures. up and said two large figures, it's gonna have to retail for hundred eighty, two hundred dollars, and I don't know if it'll work. Yeah, I mean, I guess you're right, and I guess what works about this is like, you are know, his audience buying these kind of, or are people kind of being like, because this is a little like you, you're not just like Boba Fett Frankenstein. You're no, like, this takes just, a while to get, not a while, but it's people are seeking this out. Yeah, the, the thing of the glass he's, he's being kind of, the thing is really, really but that's cool because he he's focusing on this no weird little minutia. Yeah, no one's know. ever taken that glass and made it. Everyone knows it, but he was the guy to actually do it. Well done, dude. Yeah, that's good. Rock on. I like this. Great idea. I didn't the Slimer and, the, and Peter Venkman I was like okay yeah no shit that's good because the Peter and the Slimer everyone knows that you, you know what it is it's cute but it's not funny that, that has that's, a gag well yeah good. because yeah. Slimer is the bad guy yeah, it's obvious Slimer. I like that he's picked the sort of the, 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 un, the unobvious thing okay this is Dollar Slice Bootlegs a friend of mine, so I'm sorry if I have something critical. I'm, <laughs> the only reason I'm and listen, I don't not, if I criticize your work, it's not because I don't like you or eye don't eye. or don't <laughs> listen. I just, if you're if you're a friend of mine or you don't know me, but you know, we're not friends, and I say something critical of your work, uh, don't take it personally. I'm just uh, it's just my opinion, and I'm open to just as much criticism for the bullshit that I yeah, make. Yeah, it doesn't too. mean anything. So at San Diego, he had one um, where. Krusty was like I think it was like a meth addict, mm-hmm. and on the back he was like showing his ass for his big uh, Flanders buff Flanders that was okay. just about to suck him off. Yeah. Like he was selling selling and, blow jobs for crack. And that toy sold out. I think opening night in San Diego. I, I you know you think he's he's this one did not sell out. Did New York it? New York was a different show. We sold out a very little, but we sold out more than half of them. Do you think he's tapping into the bootleg Simpsons crap? That are like the bootleg I, I, like Bart and I stuff have, like that. I have encouraged him to go in this direction. Okay. Um, this is this is what's the, how would you what's the direction that you're describing here? Um, to keep making fun of Krusty. Why Krusty? It just it hit a nerve, dude. I what, see it in what, people's eyes when they come up. Why do you think the Krusty I think character a bootleg was a good Simpson candidate did. for this particular vehicle? I, I I can't explain why because you can do stuff to Bart, but. He's a kid, right? And if you have Bart threatening to kill himself, you have Bart doing drugs or going to take it in the ass from Flanders or being molested. It like 
I'm not sure people want to own that. But the thing is, Krusty is already kind of on the edge. <laughs> but the thing is, Krusty was Krusty is an entertainer <coughs> in the show, right? I mean, I personally find this pretty, like, just uh, whatever. It's just like a, this like is a disabled make, veteran yeah, about to blow his brains out. I got, a, I got an uncle who's a Vietnam vet, and I found it pretty like it's a little tasteless. Yeah, even in that Wet Hot American Summer where they make the cook is a Vietnam vet that gets freaked out. Mm-hmm. I love that movie, but I'm just like, it's it's too much of a real problem we have here. It's a sad fact of life. Yeah, and I think it's. But kind this of seems like, like it's sort of making fun of it, or yeah, tri- give all the money to the vets then. You know, I, it's a little, it's a little bit. I don't, I don't want to tell them, but I'm like, yeah, that's don't make fun of vets. You know, I'm not into war, I'm not into guns, but that seems a little bit like, oh yeah, it's a really sad. I feel like place. it's making, it's making fun of, rather than like, like bringing light to a problem, a societal problem. It seems like it's making fun of and trivial, trivializing. Why not just a little crusty bit? Trump and just sell we're, a thousand? We're of talking about it now. <laughs> Yeah, uh, we are, but I don't think... But, was yeah. that the intention of the piece? No, it wasn't. It was to sell it out, I think. Yeah, why does anybody make anything to sell it? And on the back, he's got his <laughs> brains blown out. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, Ooh, it's, I, it's I, okay. I, I can't. It's, it's excellently made. The figure is really tight. And you can open it, and it's all magnetic. Yeah, that's really really good. It's, the execution is good. I, 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 listen, DSB, you know, you, you know I love you. Yeah, I you're just, fine, I just, but... I just feel like you're... Your, this is incredibly poor taste. Yeah, my uncle. So uh, God bless. My uncle was in the 101st in 1968. So, well, speaking of, let's switch. Let's go to for a contrast. Let's go to the. Uh, you said like okay, here is Bart, <coughs> and Blart, and it's a fat Bart Simpson. It's actually designed by Ron English. Designed by Ron English. Oh. Okay. So are all the iconoclasts his? Iconoclast is Manny X Romero. Who's that? Um, he's the one who has this line of Simpsons figures. You can turn it over. You think released. he buys stuff from me? And he's actually made all of these. Um, I have that one, that the, one, the that one, that one, that one. This is not out yet. So there's he like the Bad Acid, the du- MF Doom one. There's even more than that. He yeah. did the Bad Acid, right? Blart. Yeah. I did a Bad Acid piece yeah. in 2009. So what's being what's going on here? It's just Bart and his fat. fat. Well, he actually easy. has a designer series. He did one for Penelope Gazin. He's done like uh, I don't know. He's done about like ten different artists so far who've done their interpretations of Bart. This is well done, but and who I cares? asked him if he wanted to do a Ron English, <laughs> so I put him in touch. All right, how did it do? Uh, like everything else, we sold about half of them. Yeah, but we made fifty of them, so. Does it say stuff on it? It says with snacks. I don't know. I love Ron English, but I think his Serial Killer series is really boring and dumb. It's so on the nose. It's Mm -hmm. like, yes, we know sugary cereal makes you fat and causes diabetes. You're not into fat shaming? Yeah, it's it's like, I mean, it just, I don't see the point. It's like, I get it, you know. It should be a little bit more confusing. It just, I don't, I I hate when, I hate it, I hate didactic work. I hate when a piece has one point to make and it hits you on the head with it and then there's nothing else around it. I don't care how cool it looks, you know, and I'm, I guess I'm alone because I asked Lev to explain the Grin Stormtrooper to me. Mm-hmm. And it's like, cause. He calls and it just that. like, you know, it looks <laughs> cool. And it's just like, why? Why the Stormtrooper? Why did you pick the Stormtrooper? Because they wanted Star Wars. Because yeah. he puts his grin on everything. Yeah, but why? For money. Money. People need to buy things so artists can be artists. It's fine. Whatever. I'm not feeling it. Yeah, I'm not really. I mean, it's a lot of work and it's well done, but who cares at the end of the day? Uh, So, this is Emperor Cryogenius from Acquired Taste Industry. Okay, what do we got here? Uh, That looks to be a Walt head. It's Walt Disney in an astromech droid body. It's like his cryogenically preserved head with a Death Star dome. And so it's kind of an Epcot. Kind of Epcot with Mickey Hayes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Death Star Epcot. This is great. <coughs> I thought conceptually it was really good. Yeah, it's funny. It's really, really well made. I mean, there's a lot of sh- lot of parts, a lot of things going on. And I, I you probably didn't like it, but I, I really liked his uh, Ugna. No, I did. I reviewed that in the last episode. You didn't see that. I did. I didn't. Li- I didn't like it at first. Because I didn't, I thought it was another one of these just like, let's just slap some random shit together. But then I read the oh, back. Oh, you read the back and you saw what the back say? It had, well, it was so, I need, I like when there's some mm-hmm. reasoning behind it. I don't write on, there's no reasoning. Yeah, but the thing is, you're on some other shit. You know, you yeah. are an abstract, you do abstractions, or you, you, you're, you're, you're a reductive artist, you know. You know, you're, what you do is like, you sort of take all the context out of things and sort of turn them into sort of abstract art, art pieces, you know, and that's what I, that's what I like. But, 
You know, and you're not, there's nothing to, you, you don't, you're, you, you're deliberately not making any kind of statement as far as I can tell. It's really yeah, it's, taking, all, you're subtracting all the meaning from it. It's weird, because to me it's like, when you do something like this, you're creating something, right? It's right. Like, so if you're a songwriter, this is your song, this is your lyrics, this is your music. Then what is this? The, the description of the lyrics? You it's, know, like I feel like that. I mean, the liner me. note. They're liner notes. No, let's the, read it. Let's read no, it. No, no, no. But the lyrics and the description. Look, there's some people who say that you should never even describe art at all. Yeah, totally. Yeah. That the art should exist. It should speak to you or it doesn't. Yeah, but so it. much of that's these. That's But, but we're all riffing on, like, you know, this particular presentation and all these toys that. had, you know, the, 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 the bio on the back. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's sort of baked into the cake. So it's like how you flip the bio is is, it is part of the what he said. It just depends. Oh wait, read it out loud. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read it out loud. Thought by the masses to have been stricken down by a terminal illness long ago. In truth, Emperor Cryogenius has become more powerful than one could possibly imagine. I like it. He continues to rule the galaxy secretly from the catacombs of an amusement shrine he built in his own honor. Okay, we get it. It's a Walt Disney gag. Did original figures describe stuff? Star Wars didn't have any description. Star Wars didn't, but it's like a lot of... I think G.I. Joe, Joe was really the, the one. Yeah, the file to, card, yeah. G.I. Yeah. Joe. I love the names because they were he, ethnic. He so made came with a comic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And this, and is, this, is, this is fun. By the 90s, Star Wars had a description on the back. Mm -hmm. This is cool. I bet most people didn't get that, right? Mm. Um, but the astromech crowd must have been like, I need this R2. I need that. Definitely. Yeah, that's that's the thing. There make are, make okay. an astromech. Everybody loves it. Okay, this is this is Josh Mayhem blown away trooper, and it looks like a stormtrooper figure that's sort of dripping against Reminds gravity. Reminds me of the collab we did. Remember where I took your troopers and put resin on them and the drips? Yeah, we did that at the store. That's what Josh normally does. That's it what this what this style. artist does. Mm -hmm. Like he had that ad at at there that yeah. he did the same thing to it. It is a dummies is. I like it. It looks cool. It's an interesting approach. The here's photos where, of it look really here's the cool. the problem the I have them. with it. Let's read the back. Um, so you're getting ready in the morning, drinking your Imperial coffee out of your Imperial coffee mug when a thought hits you out of nowhere. What if this second Death Star in position that blows up too? I mean, the odds of the first one blowing up are pretty thin. There's no way that could possibly happen again, right? Later that day, you start hearing all these loud ass alarms go off in shit. And you're like, ah, hell nah. Oh, God. Speak for yourself. Right at that moment, you notice some X-Wing fighters and a random ass YT-1300F light freighter zoom past your station window like, what the fuck? Some TIE fighters follow soon after, which makes you declare out loud, this is some boo shit. You hear a couple of explosions, then there it is, a giant motherfucking fireball coming straight at you and all you can think is, wait, fireballs don't work in space, whoa the fuck? All right. That sucks. Yeah. Piece is cool. <laughs> I love I love the stormtrooper as a platform and just as an abstract shape and it's just as like a symbol. And this looks cool. I don't feel there was any need whatsoever to sort of create a narrative around it to fit this into Return of the Jedi. I feel like it actually cheapens the Especially the vernacular. Yeah, is the like, way he's like, trying to sound all hip -hop. Like hip, like why isn't it just some like drive-by? It's on totally unnecessary. So you prefer it just existed? Yeah, yeah it, it seems need more sci-fi. I didn't know there was. At all. I didn't know there was a. And I hate. Narrative. I hate when people try to cram it, shoe it, and shoehorn it into Star Wars specifically. It's like you're you're riffing on a very familiar symbol, and you're doing something kind of, uh, you know, abstract to it. <coughs> and then and then you're bringing it back down to earth and trying to deliberately cram it into <laughs> Star Wars. It's just completely unnecessary. Yeah, you got to edit a little bit. And more. just like. Rehashing the way the Star Wars package works, it's just you don't need it. But that's what people like. Stuff. People love the Star Wars. I guess shit. I don't need it. I don't need the explanation. I think people are making it's not things. Funny. It's not funny. It's, it's very forced. Yeah, I think people. I think a lot of people make things, and they feel like the success of it is going to be the sale of it. So because of that, they start they start adding a lot of things that have worked. For people to sell things. I mean, this would look cool in a completely blank package. Yeah, his photos are really cool. You know, like you know, like the the way he shoots them on the angle with the white background. Sure. You know, like they look cool. Yeah. But yeah, it's just like yeah, the the whole street slang is totally not. It necessary. has no relationship. Yeah. What's, what's and his right? logo is a little confusing. I keep thinking it says Tosh Mayhem. Yeah, me too. So, but okay, but the Whatever. piece the his, do you the, boo the, the piece is cool. How many more pieces do we have? Three or four. Maybe we should review some psychedelic pieces. Let's do it. Okay, this is Junk Fed Space Madness Mirror Universe 
Spock and what it is. He's done a lot of these. It's like basically Star Trek characters wearing Stormtrooper armor, right? You can turn over, you can see the rest of them. So this is pretty much the last figure in the line. Mm-hmm. So he's done? So there was like a blue snaggle tooth. And it's got snaggle puss instead Blue of snaggle snaggle puss. Yeah, it's got a, a Leia Uhura, a Mork <coughs> Bach. His handsome <coughs> Greedo, too bad, was great. And then he's got the Kirk and Spock in the Stormtrooper armor and the two headed ETs. The Spock okay. Trooper is kind of the, the most popular, the one that Spock, had the most demand. Spock so Trooper. Decided to make it the mirror version. Do it. From the Mirror Mirror episode. Yeah. Cool. Um, and then what I thought was a nice touch is he put all the graphics backwards. Yeah, so that's so cool. when you hold it up to a mirror. Uh huh. Oh, what? Yeah. Cool. Uh, yeah, that's cool. It's very clean, and it seems like it would be in like a, a quirky retro shop, like you know, like it seems like it should be a product or something like that, like like the Rosie the Riveter mm-hmm. or the Sigmund Freud, sure. like it, his stuff has that feel, like it's very clean and It's poppy, really well done, you know. Uh, this one's by Junk Fit. Yeah. And uh, that's even backwards, too. Conceptually, I don't really get get it that much. Yeah, it looks it's cool. the mashup. You see that blue and the mashup. black and you're like, oh, it's a stormtrooper. But he looks... Yeah, okay. I think the best thing that they did was the fucking, the Greedo Han Solo thing. That was so fucking cool. Because I like I like that because it's like you're taking these two very familiar figures sure. and then you're doing some you're, you're doing an inversion and again it's not about the characters. I think Blue Snaggle Post is amazing. I don't. Know I, yeah, but that's, that's a that's a it, pun. I, that's it is a pun. No, but when that came out, I was on either Twitter or texting with somebody, and we came up with like twenty other Hanna Barbera. I think it was Keith Boswell. Yeah. 20 other Hanna-Barbera Star Wars names, yeah. they were fucking hysterical. I wish we would do I wish we them. had them. Oh my god. Keith, uh, you're out there. <laughs> He's watching. Yeah, yeah, Keith is watching. I yeah, find this. It was funny though. A little too representational. Hey. But what the fuck do I know? A lot. Not, not according to you. No, you have a different perspective and it is valid. Okay. I just like saying, that's why you keep I, sh- trying to shut it down. I'm, I'm not. I appreciate your opinion. <laughs> Good. But I'm also that's saying to me. that there is a place for this. Yeah, I know. I'm not knocking it. I think his, the, I like the hand solo Greedo piece. What? Because it's a visual pun and it's like, it's like, like what, what, these, what works <coughs> about all these things is like all these images and this, these designs are so ingrained in our head that when you see like a visual flip on it, you know, it's not so much about the character and the story, it's more about your relationship. It's fucking your brain up because it's like something you're so familiar with suddenly looks different. And I always say something. that like when I make stuff it's like if you have a dream when you're a kid or or an adult and you're like, I had a toy from my childhood and it was in the dream and I had it, but it wasn't really that toy. I have that dream all the time. But that's what my stuff is. It's like I had a dream that I had like it was like Boba Fett, but it was it was kind of like Cobra Commander too. Like that's yeah, it. That's I, I, what I do. I, I always yeah. have that dream where I go into the toy store and, and there's all these Star Wars it. figures <laughs> and they don't make any sense. And that's my. I still really have a studio. Thing. Yeah, that's yeah, you are. yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I've attempted to do. Okay, this is manly art. So in San Diego, he did 24 is paintings, it? original paintings of Boba Fett. Mm-hmm. And for New York, he did 24 original paintings of the Greedo action figure. And then he put a figure with it. Really cool. And I said this. The to painting you, is excellent. To, yeah. The whole concept is great, and I said this to you and to Jason. No, not I mean, yeah, the painting is should have been a vintage figure in there. I I, I wish it could have been. Yeah, Charging yeah, yeah. down twenty four of them because it's really distracting. It's like, why is this thing in here? If there was one place, and that's a nod to saying how great the painting is, you know. If there was one place that you could go to buy twenty four fucked up figures for five bucks each, DK you can't get that. <coughs> you can't <coughs> find them. <coughs> getting harder and harder. Yeah, I noticed that. And it would really take months of preparation, and the problem is, the $5 figure's fine. It's that you have to pay shipping on each one because you're not getting them from one source. And before you know it, you're adding, you know, $10, $15 to the cost, and it... It'd be interesting, too, if, like, each one had a different patina scratch. I'm not, I'm not in love the with the And the painting was the particular figure that was there in terms of the wear and tear. I'm just saying that financially... For him to sit down and paint 24 original paintings. Yeah, that's amazing. Like, he's doing this because he wants the exposure and because it's fun. But at $150 a pop, like, this is, like, really affordable. I got an idea. I just feel like he missed the mark of the color. 
can send it to him. He can do a portrait of that particular one from their childhood with the wear on it that they put on it during their childhood. I'm just going to go through all that. Were you kidding me? You started right here first. first. Yeah, dude. My idea. I don't get the Shop color. I, don't, I think he missed the mark on the color of the figure. Well, yeah, obviously. Is that on purpose? No, they it, the, 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 the glitter think, bled. Yeah, I think it was clear with green glitter. But that's probably embossing powder if it, if it bled. The guy cast them... Um, I mean, the thing is, I don't know, I don't think that this would have necessarily worked if you just had either the actual figure or a, a rep or a copy. It had to be something. It had to be something a little different. I think, I think it should have been totally clear. That would have been funny. Because well, yeah, then the painting would show through. Yeah, a clear one would be cool. I mean, the thing, one of the things that I kind of don't like about this is that the bubble kind of goes over <laughs> an important part of the painting, but that's just... And that's all different. Sometimes the most significant thing is happening right there. And that's kind yeah. of And I asked him, do you want to put some blisters here and some blisters here? Is oh, that, what a know? process of gluing that blister to a painting, right? right? Like, it's yikes. amazing. Just yeah. take your I mean, it's, finished painting and glue something yeah, to it. Yeah, it's weird, but it's... Really cool it, shit, it, though. It's man. cool. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah, some I, people commented they wish there wasn't a figure there at all. But yeah, I think, totally. Yeah, but then what's the... Then it's just a painting of a burrito. Yeah, but if it's on a card... I don't know. I think there's something going on there. I'd <coughs> like to see it go a little further. I would say this buzzer guts say Utini. I would say that this is the hit of the show. This is the one that I could have sold a hundred of them if I had them. So it's, it's a Jawa figure holding a boombox over his head. You like say anything? Yeah. I thought a Tuscan Raider would have been good because he has the holding hands already. Yeah, but Tuscan Raiders don't say anything. I know, but just went, yeah. And then That'd you can hilarious. Yeah, yeah. And, and this then, is about a relationship. And then you can actually do it where you have that that shot that's just reversed and stuff, and put a radio in his hand. To know a Jawa is to love a Jawa. R five D four is about to get to know Jawa. Did females buy this? Yes. Few. Yeah. I think it's mostly males. Do men buy it. women buy any of this crap? Yeah, I think most. I think it's about seventy five percent men, twenty five yeah. females. Um, do you have female collectors of your work? Here and there, yeah. Yeah, I do. Yeah. It's a, a, it's what would you say the ratio was? Twenty five, seventy five, something like that. Um, I don't like this piece. The blue colors, I mean, just color, just layout wise. I mean, is it based on the video cassette? That artwork? Don't yeah, know. it is. It has to be. I've seen John Cusack's face and the <coughs> girl. All I can say is I wish I had more. Some blog picked it up. Something people would come up to the booth. They like, do you have that Jawa figure? I was like, no, and they would. They wouldn't even look at anything else. It really what Jawa is that? Is that a? It looks like a. Pa- it was like the Power of the Force Jawa when they had the two in the pack. Yeah. And, and, and it's also because the drawing of the R five D four is the for, the power of the Force R five D four. Because see how elongated the head is. Yeah. Like normally his head is a little more squat. Right, so that was one of the worst movie. Star Wars figures ever made. That missile launching R five D four, and that's the one he put. That's funny. Um, I don't like the way the bubble goes over the fucking graphic. You could have moved that over a little bit. I, I hate when they do that. I've made that mistake sometimes when like I print out the card and I'm all re- it's coming out tomorrow and I'm getting ready to assemble and it's like oh fuck, I I, fu- I misplaced the graphic. But it's like that's a that's a disaster to me with the bubble going right <laughs> over the first letter of the word and over the credits. You could have scaled this down and moved it just a little bit mistake sold out bro and sold out i'm glad it's sold. i just again <laughs> this is just like there's no reason for this what's the connection why why i actually had an explanation is that he kept going to the video store to rent other movies in the 80s and he just wanted everything to be star wars okay that makes sense i like that idea look at the back yeah on the, the back on the, the back. back is excellent it's Pee Wee, P.O.'s, <laughs> Big Adventure, Yoda, Ghostbusters. It's <coughs> <coughs> so Mad Magazine, though. Yeah. Fat face. It's it's funny. It's it's a, it's it's funny. I, I, I like Mad I just wish that like all these people who came to the booth and said like, "Do you have the Jawa?" and I would say, "Sold out." And they would turn around and walk away. And wouldn't look at anything. They wouldn't else. look at anything else. I'm like, but there's other things that are just as just funny. as funny. And so everybody just, else's stuff. Nobody cares. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess. I How many know. John Cusack Star Wars figures are going to be popping up for Decon? A lot. <laughs> right. This is the last one? Yes. Okay, we're going to review awesome. my figure at the end. Uh, this Your is uh, Lucky Chew by Little Lazies. Okay, and um, it's like a cute little kawaii Chewbacca. Mm-hmm. And apparently these are all hand sculpted, right? Hand, so this is an edition of 35, so she hand sculpted 35 of them. And she rolls the color, Jeez. so she doesn't have to paint anything. That's, uh, 
I think she is insane. It's I think thing. this is insane too. I watched a Japanese game show where people. It's so good. It's a game show where they make figures and mm. they compete, and there's one where they do all like the. Do these things whatever break play and shipping is. at all? No. Yeah, it's really? probably pretty solid, I think. I ships them to us rolled and we pack it. Those teeth. <clears throat> right? And the bandolier with the little glitter bars. Well, yeah, it's not painted, Morgan. She rolls. I know, that's like. Sets, is this Fimo or Sculpey? Probably FEMA because it comes in colors, right? Sculpt it comes in colors. But that much many colors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I like the card art. I like the. Just yeah, it's really cool. Yeah, it's cute. It it's looks like the finish on it is nice and flat. And I like flat 55 finish. 55 bucks? How is she doing it? It's just for exposure, right? You can't make money off this. Uh, go to her site. All her stuff is super affordable. 30, 40 <clears> bucks. <throat> you can get a hand sculpted you know, piece of art. It's amazing to me. Okay. This is, I mean, this is cool. It's like, that's, that's, I don't know what else to say about it. It's fun. It's a fun interpretation, I guess. I'd like to watch her do it. Wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. Isn't it? Let me ask the question, though, and this is something that I've coming up against the wall, too, and what sort of stuff would really like to sort of, it's like, is it, when is it, is it ever going to be, like, t- too much to just keep riffing on fucking Star Wars over and over again? How long have you been doing it? Like, 13 years. And do you see it slowing down at all? Only 13 years? I mean, I've been doing Wait, it. Wait, I'm the first one to do it. I've I mean, been I'm the first. Well, I mean, I put out... <laughs> Star Wars Breakbeats was the first thing I ever put out. I put that in 96. But in terms of chopping up figures and putting them together. I mean, are you ready to... I know that you're emotionally ready to stop, that you want to move on, and I you wish that you had other source of income, because you're like every other artist who is successful. I know you, you probably cringe at the word success, but... No. Um, you know, if you go to an Eagles concert... Mm-hmm. And you pay whatever two hundred dollars to go see the Eagles, and they don't play Hotel California. You are fucking yeah, pissed. That analogy doesn't work. It totally works. No, because they wrote that song. I didn't. None of us wrote it, Star Wars. If you understand it, though, the reason it does it doesn't matter. Like if you, they do not want to sing Hotel California ever again. And if they ever announce that they're going to do a new tour and only play new stuff, no one fucking shows up. Right? That's a, that's true across the board. Eric Clapton, Metallica, you name it. Like, it, it, anyone who just says we're only playing stuff from our new album, like that's not what people Shut want. Shut up and play the hits. I guess, but I, I right? don't. And I those don't, people, I they do not want to play that music I anymore. I don't think it's the same they, thing. They, I think I think they the came up is, with it thirty years ago, and that's it's like, you know, it's like if Led Zeppelin toured and they didn't play Stairway to Heaven, you fucking have a shit pit. I know, but okay, I mean, so, but these are not cover bands. You know, it doesn't matter. It does matter. So, the basis of your work. Um, is riffing on Star Wars, okay? That is the major the 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 theme that runs through the majority of your work, okay? That's what people want. Now they like it when you do a Captain America, when you do this. It doesn't matter. It could be Star Wars. It could be Marvel. It could be anything. But you think that it's I, the foundation of it is is well, using you, other people's well, material. This will be the perfect test. Don't have a pop culture theme in any of your work starting today. See what happens. No, I'm not going to do my, it today. My, my original sculpts, which are the first things ever cast in resin, the slimy guys, mm-hmm. there's no pop culture there. And I, those are still really popular. I bought a set. I love those. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think the thing is... And, I think it's wonderful that you can do that. I'm making more, yeah. Okay. Um, and I think that it would be good for you to venture out and do things that don't have pop culture themes. But if you want to keep the lights on, you're going to keep doing it. But don't you think that like, the reason why people initially started buying like weird versions of Star Wars figures... Was because they had all the other Star Wars, yeah, figures, that, much like yourself, and and people see it as not not, that, not not as the psychedelic thing, but the psychedelic version of Star Wars, which I'm agreeing with you, Doug. But, right. Like, yeah. Not only that, they're they're burnt out. Yeah. Okay. Because as a licensed product, companies will continue to make the same thing over and over and over again, and then when we get to the end of the line, they'll just change the scale mm-hmm. and start again. And start again. That's what's happening with the Black Series now. Mm-hmm. And they so have the six inch. They have the eight inch. And Twelve inch. You name it. You know. Um, so once you realize that there is no end, and that in order to make their money, they will license the quarter inch scale and the six scale and the twelve scale, and they'll just keep going to different companies. This company will go out of business. Another one will start up and do the same thing all over again. When they run out of ships to do, they'll do the gold version of the ships. Mm-hmm. Then they will change the scale again, and that you can just continue to fill your house with different versions of the same thing that have no artist attribution, no. It just it becomes a commodity. 
And so those people who are burnt out but really like it, I think first saw your work and thought, wow, this is an interesting take on it. Mm -hmm. This is something that Lucasfilm or Disney could never do. I don't have a pink stormtrooper. They but they could never make a comment like that. Yeah. You can't take... Marvel will never take a Captain America and have it stand up for Native American rights. That, that will never happen. Why? Well, that seems like an easy, easy days. one, though. Yeah. Dude, it, it's, they made him a Nazi. It, that was like in the forties. Like, no, no recently. recently. Recently, really? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah the whole Hydra thing. Shit. He's been a Nazi the whole time. But that's the way it started, right? And, well, yeah. Th but they're gonna find some way to undo that if they haven't already. Right? Well, Sesame Street went to Mishka, so. But that's the license, like. Yeah, but they had like. It, that was weird, smart. Yeah, but I'm saying like they're but taking peanuts away. Peanuts went to Compass, you know. It's like. Was that some of was the that worst Schultz or garbage was that I've ever seen? But that was no, Schultz was dead. But yeah, that's the whole. Thing. But it's still yeah. licensed. Yeah, there right? was not a lot of peanuts when he was still alive. I, I'm happy when, when these companies allow creative people to take their characters, and do and do their own take on it. I think that that's fantastic. Yeah. But it is rare. It's going to become more common now that they can't keep retreading, and they realize there's money to be made in pink stormtroopers. I feel. So Let, let's well, see what I happens. Hope, I hope that they acknowledge people like you. Well, we'll see about that. I guess for me personally, you know, I was just like, and I'm not going to stop doing this immediately. A because I do feel like I have a little bit more to say with this particular. Do you enjoy process. doing it? Not sometimes. I enjoy the. I don't enjoy sitting there sanding and gluing and all that this crap. This dude the time. just wants a fucking payday no, that's so he can sit on the couch and do nothing. I, but I never sit on the couch and do nothing. But you you aspire to. No, I don't. Of course, I, I mean, all I like, you do is complain about I like how much work you have to do. Yeah, and I would like to work less, but it's like I don't want to. I'm not looking to just cash out and fucking lay on the beach all day. I like to go to the beach for a day or two here and there, and then I get antsy and want to go and be creative. I just would like to do. I would like to create things on a bigger scale, you know, and be able to actually do something that wasn't like, oh, I'm pulling this out of my ass, and oh, and it's in, a struggle. It's like I like the grand to scheme of things. You will find that your best work came from when you were under pressure. Had okay, to but I need to. But I would like to be true. under pressure on a different plateau. Oh, and when you, you are, I hope that that you can achieve that. But when you are financed well, and you have the ability to do whatever you want, but that never really happens. It will. You will just start meandering around. I and disagree. Start, you don't know what I'm going to do. People start fucking with their work, and it, it got good, and they kept fucking with it, and it got worse and worse and worse. And having You a, can judge me when this actually happens. Having a deadline is just for all you artists but out there. Everybody has a deadline. Even if someone gave you $10 million and said, do something with this, you're still going to have a deadline. You're still going to be under pressure. I'm just saying that the pressure and the deadline, the thing that you want to get away from most is your best friend. No, I'm not trying to get away from pressures and deadlines. That's that's a fa fact of life. You never get away from that. I just want to do a different type of work. It's like walking around the convention this last weekend and seeing everybody's just screwing you around at the same Stop shit. talking about it and just do it. This is a fucking talk show. I'm just saying, but you and need to do it. And by the way, if you think this is one of the best <laughs> suck hours that you've seen, let us know. I'm just, all I'm saying to you is that if you need, if, uh, so if you've written your Hotel California and you are forced to play that over and over again, either to pay the bills or because the fans want that, that is fine. But you can also balance that by creating new work. I haven't, written, written, I, haven't, I haven't written my Hotel California. You don't think so? This is, I'm still playing in the cavern. These are, <coughs> cover, these are all cover songs. These are my interpretations of cover songs. Mm, I disagree. Is, I think you've tapped into something. But um, then there's got to be more to it because it's just like, or at least I know I have in my side. Like that's for you to decide. All this stuff, like taking everything I've ever liked and just sort of pouring it in and, and remixing and reinterpreting it is a great process to really sort of chew and digest why I like all this stuff and what it does to me. But, but then if I don't... If I don't then take that and create a wholly new thing out of it, then it was just a nobody waste of was time. doing that when you started. There were a few people, but you you are like the godfather of this. You've you've managed to take popular culture, take it in, spit it back out as your own, and now you own it with impunity, and you continue to release it, and no one can stop you, or they no. haven't they haven't tried. And they can't anymore because you've been doing it so long, right? And so yeah. what it it's like. 
Yeah, but all right. someone has to do is make a Stranger Things figure, and it's going to sell much more than yeah, what people, Morgan's yeah, doing. Yeah, that, that that's, Stranger that's just Things it. figures I, blew me away. Yeah, it's just like, I that's think, all it is. I think the two things can exist. They, they appeal to a different audience, yeah. and I think that there can be a, a different consumer collector in this small niche that have different tastes. People who really want um, the parody mashup that they want it on the nose, and then there's people come up to the booth and they want something political, they want something deeper, they're looking for more. Both can exist simultaneously. And you can have your opinions about it, and you're welcome to have them, but they both exist. And okay, there's a, yeah. there's a place I'm not, for I'm both I'm not trying to say those things should go away. You know? Well, you're, you have more, cons- and I think myself too, we have a consistency. Where like my, my work ethic and my, my goal, and yours as well, didn't change because there was a cool Netflix show on last year. Whereas a lot of people decided they're going to actually start yeah, their it career. Was a, it was a co- of it. it was a cool thing that you saw thirty years ago. No, it was my l- majority yeah. of my life. I don't think did, it's a valid. This is what we were talking about before. Did you start doing this on your own, or did you start doing it because you saw other people doing it? I think that's a huge thing. The people who we saw doing it was ILN. You know. Um, my okay. first Star Wars right, experience. Let, right. let me finish. Yeah. My first Star Wars experience was the making of Empire Strikes Back. That's the first thing I remember seeing. Making of Star Wars. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, so and, and so it's we, just have, like, we have now established. Yeah. That the two of you. No, no, not the two of us. Oh, many no, people no, before okay, us. Okay, fine. But I'm, we're talking about the yeah, three yeah. people on the couch. The two yeah. of you have come. I have seen something and decided to create something, and you are not inspired by other people before you. No, we're inspired by the material that inspired That's us. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. And then there's another second and third generation of people who have seen your work yeah. and have decided to create their work based on that. Yeah, but that, that's the thing. Like The All people right, so, that did Star Wars were obviously inspired by Harryhausen, but Vader looks like Vader. He doesn't look like some Cyclops. He I looks think. like a samurai. But he's a he's the Black Knight and the Samurai. Yeah, and he's, he's like got a Russian Alba- telegraphic That's not stuff. the point. But you're, no, I'm saying you right are now, trying to establish yourself as someone who did not look to these other artists and copy what they did. And so I'm acknowledging yeah, yeah, yeah. what you're saying, and then I'm going to say, so what? No, exactly. So all what? right. So there's all these about a hundred other guys in the scene yeah. who are all making resin figures because of YouTube. No, I'm not saying that either. Maybe. Who cares? Okay. Most people don't even know who I am. I don't I'm care. Just Listen, and the look, only reason... The it only doesn't matter. So, so like, this is the godfather. I don't know what you are. You're no, like, I'm a guy who always built models. And it's like Paul Kaiju. Like, he's built models his whole what? life, and now he's doing... What they, the like, he is, doesn't start doing Japanese vinyl because of Shigeru. I, I'm going to say that I agree with what <laughs> you you're know? saying, Yeah. but there's nothing wrong with it. No, and no, but there is something being on the other side of it, being like I don't, I don't think that you should sit here and try and prove. I'm not anything. trying to prove; it's just where where our motivation comes from. The only reason Who I cares? like doing this in the first I place. Do. This is my show. I'm talking about stuff. Okay. The only reason I like doing these review shows is because I'm not trying to knock anybody or no. bash anybody or say I'm the first or I'm the best. There's nothing worse when you go to those fucking graffiti things and the old guys are like, I was the first guy to do this. No, but we all know shit. you're the first but guy who did it. The re- I don't, yeah, and I don't need to say it, and I don't care because the first is not that? always the best. But... Morgan's the first guy that you knew. I mean, but like to say, like it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. That's not the like point. Morgan does what Morgan does. The only reason I you know. like to review these toys is because it helps me clarify in my own mind what my point is or what I'm trying That's to do. That's what I said to you. I don't I care. Said these I'm not guys, trying to tell these guys to go away, and I'm not, not trying to say that I'm better than these guys. You know, I have my my what words, I'm You could critique the shit and my shit all day and find all kinds of flaws. Is that? By these guys looking at your work, going and making their own work, right, is pushing you on a straighter path. Is this good for you? It's different. Yeah, I mean, it just it that, gives though. me something. It that, gives right? me something to think about. It. Like, it, it, <coughs> it gives me something to it helps me clarify my own thoughts. Do you think that you that's know? different work? Because it's like I know it's the same thing. Everyone's doing the same thing. But when somebody does something like uh, like Boba Stein or whatever or Frankenfett, either of the two. There, that's got a lot more to do with Morgan than it does to do with what Mor- what brought Morgan to inspire those people. Don't you think? I don't know. It doesn't I mean, the fact, matter. It's not, it's, not, it's not anybody's fault or it's not worse or anything, it's, but it's, they have different inspirations. It all exists. And there's different fans for, you know, 
uh, for different pieces, and people like it for different reasons. It's all character design. That's the thing. Some people are into the horror stuff. They like a representation of Frankenstein. Yeah. And, I mean, you've done it. I've done it plenty of times, and I'm not saying, I'm not, like, disavowing anything I've done. I'm just saying, like, this is my... So what are we talking about? Because I'm coming... Because we're... Because this, is a, is, show, this is a show for people that are interested in art and creativity oh, right. and process and, and are interested in hearing creative people talk about their work and how they come to their creations and how they work their things and out. So I will say again that, that you reviewing this and you looking at what other people are doing and seeing what you don't like, if this all didn't exist, you would have more shitty puns in your work. That's not necessarily true. Yeah, you, right, you know now, right because now, no, because you are 100% staying away from shitty puns, and you are trying to elevate your work which to the are next my, level. Which are my worst shitty puns? Listen, I started doing just this to look just at because it. I wanted to do it, and this is what I came to, and I'm doing it, and I and I did it, and I'm still fine. I mean, Reich has collected before. He said he collected stuff, right? So it's like automatically, he's more interested in the stuff than Morgan and I are. I've never collected any anybody's of the figures, and I, and it's not a thing. It's just a matter of I wasn't doing that. Like I'm, you know, this for you. No, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying it just makes the materials that people are making different. I collect real Star Wars figures, like a lot of other people, which is even more boring. Then, isn't it? Like I'm less unique because I only collected real figures. What's wrong with collecting Star Wars figures? I'm, that's what I'm saying. But I'm saying well, like he's saying he collected Star Wars figures, but he's never collected the work of anybody else before he started. Yeah, it just never interested me. Even Morgan stuff, I love looking at it, but I wouldn't buy it. I think I bought your Jerry Saltz figure. Well, I, I but but know. I'm just saying like it's automatically. But, but but so therefore Morgan's attitude at looking at this, he can't look at it like he's looking at something that's on par with his own work because it's from a different. It's coming from a different perspective. No, I mean I'm hella biased, you know, because of course yeah, I'm exactly, it exactly to my own process or trying yeah, to extremely you know biased. square it against my own reasoning for making things and finding like where do things match, where do they don't, and who's doing something that I never thought of, and that's we're saying the exact same thing. Okay, well I just feel like I'm at the point in my creativity where I feel like I don't want to just riff on George Lucas's shit. I want to do what George Lucas did. You know, it's like I feel like I've digested That's all this stuff started, to a though. certain point. Yeah, I've digested this all, yeah. but now it's like, what do you do? Do you just keep wallowing around in the same references and keep the same playing. thing? Then or do you get out of the pool and be like, okay, I'm going to make my own pool now? I think we're saying the same thing again. You're okay. saying exactly what I said. Yeah, okay. yeah. I just, just said, go I just, fucking do it. I just said it more articulately. Oh, yeah. You well, didn't say articulately. Fuck, fuck all y'all. <laughs> fuck all y'all. <laughs> Fucking shows up. No, it's just a weird thing. It's just, it's just weird to look at stuff that you're not. You're you're basically not that interested in the stuff, right? No, I'm very interested in. Oh, it. okay. I love watching, seeing what people come up with. Every once in a while, somebody comes up with something that that really blows me away, or just like what's you blown know, you away in the pile? I can't fucking in this particular pile. Yeah. Uh, that Die Hard figure was pretty cool. I wouldn't say it was yeah, the blown glass. away. But the glass was like really clever, right? And the no. clever is somewhat... Clever is cool. I don't, don't want to say clever. Clever cool. is fine. Clever is fine. No, I don't know. Boy. I'm just saying I'm, I'm just saying there's more. There's more to be done. It's like... There's so more, do it. There's more. There's I'm working on it, motherfucker. It's well, still, no, takes I'm time. I'm not telling you. I'm just saying, yeah, there is things to be done. You know, some no people, one has ever put Zartan's face in the Chewbacca before. Even though all these guys are doing shit, that was still something that nobody did. So there's things out there for And everyone. maybe they shouldn't have ever done that. What? It's been killing, bro. It's my Hotel California. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, um, if any of you guys want uh, any of these figures, um, you can email dketoys at gmail.com. Uh, don't get caught up in the fact that we released it at a show. It generally takes two or three shows to sell out most stuff. So if there's something that you want, just email us. We'd be happy to uh, send it to you. And if you enjoyed my presence on the show... Send a dollar to the Salvation <laughs> Send a dollar to this yeah, dude. If you know how to give me money. Give him money. He started everything, bro. Shut up! <laughs> Want your toy reviewed? Send to Suckadelic. Post Office Box 130134, Chinatown, New York, 10013. Handmade resin or injection molded bootlegs only. No vinyl, no customs. Submissions cannot be returned. Submission does not guarantee inclusion. Include your contact information and social media handles. Thank you.